The slide rule, also known colloquially in the United States as a slipstick, is a mechanical analog computer. The slide rule is used primarily for multiplication and division, and also for functions such as roots, logarithms and trigonometry, but is not normally used for addition or subtraction. Though similar in name and appearance to a standard ruler, the slide rule is not ordinarily used for measuring length or drawing straight lines. Slide rules exist in a diverse range of styles and generally appear in a linear or circular form with a standardized set of markings essential to performing mathematical computations. Slide rules manufactured for specialized fields such as aviation or finance typically feature additional scales that aid in calculations common to those fields. The Reverend William Orted and others developed the slide rule in the 17th century based on the emerging work on logarithms by John Napier. Before the advent of the pocket calculator, it was the most commonly used calculation tool in science and engineering. The use of slide rules continued to grow through the 1950s and 1960s even as digital computing devices were being gradually introduced but around 1974 the electronic scientific calculator made it largely obsolete and most suppliers left the business. Basic Concepts in its most basic form, the slide rule uses two logarithmic scales to allow rapid multiplication and division of numbers. These common operations can be time-consuming and error-prone when done on paper. More elaborate slide rules allow other calculations, such as square roots, exponentials, logarithms, and trigonometric functions. Scales may be grouped in decades, which are numbers ranging from 1 to 10. Thus single decade scales C and D range from 1 to 10 across the entire width of the slide rule while double decade scales A and B range from 1 to 100 over the width of the slide rule. In general, mathematical calculations are performed by aligning a mark on the sliding central strip with a mark on one of the fixed strips, and then observing the relative positions of other marks on the strips. Numbers aligned with the marks give the approximate value of the product, quotient, or other calculated result. The user determines the location of the decimal point in the result, based on mental estimation. Scientific notation is used to track the decimal point in more formal calculations. Addition and subtraction steps in a calculation are generally done mentally or on paper, not on the slide rule. Most slide rules consist of three linear strips of the same length, aligned in parallel and interlocked so that the central strip can be moved lengthwise relative to the other two. The outer two strips are fixed so that their relative positions do not change. Some slide rules have scales on both sides of the rule and slide strip, others on one side of the outer strips and both sides of the slide strip, still others on one side only. A sliding cursor with a vertical alignment line is used to find corresponding points on scales that are not adjacent to each other or, in duplex models, are on the other side of the rule. The cursor can also record an intermediate result on any of the scales. Operation Multiplication A logarithm transforms the operations of multiplication and division to addition and subtraction according to the rules in moving the top scale to the right by a distance of by matching the beginning of the top scale with the label on the bottom, aligns each number at position on the top scale with the number at position on the bottom scale, because this position on the bottom scale gives the product of an for example, to calculate 3 times 2, the 1 on the top scale is moved to the 2 on the bottom scale. The answer, 6, is read off the bottom scale where 3 is on the top scale. In general, the 1 on the top is moved to a factor on the bottom, and the answer is read off the bottom where the other factor is on the top. This works because the distances from the 1 are proportional to the logarithms of the marked values. Operations may go off the scale, for example, 
The diagram above shows that the slide rule has not positioned the 7 on the upper scale above any number on the lower scale, so it does not give any answer for 2 times 7. In such cases, the user may slide the upper scale to the left until its right index aligns with the 2, effectively dividing by 10 and then multiplying by 7, as in the illustration below. Here the user of the slide rule must remember to adjust the decimal point appropriately to correct the final answer. We wanted to find 2 times 7, but instead we calculated times 7 equals 0.2 times 7 equals 1.4. So the true answer is not 1.4 but 14. Resetting the slide is not the only way to handle multiplications that would result in off-scale results, such as 2 times 7. Some other methods are use the double decade scales A and B, use the folded scales. In this example, set the left one of C opposite the 2 of D, move the cursor to 7 on CF, and read the result from DF. Use the CI inverted scale, position the 7 on the CI scale above the 2 on the D scale, and then read the result off of the D scale below the 1 on the CI scale. Since 1 occurs in two places on the CI scale, one of them will always be on scale. Use both the CI inverted scale and the C scale. Line up the 2 of CI with the 1 of D, and read the result from D, below the 7 on the C scale. Using a circular slide rule, method 1 is easy to understand but entails a loss of precision. Method 3 has the advantage that it only involves two scales. Division the illustration below demonstrates the computation of 5.5, .5, the 2 on the top scale is placed over the 5.5 on the bottom scale. The 1 on the top scale lies above the quotient, 2.75. There is more than one method for doing division, but the method presented here has the advantage that the final result cannot be off scale, because one has a choice of using the 1 at either end. Other operations in addition to the logarithmic scales, some slide rules have other mathematical functions in coded on other auxiliary scales. The most popular were trigonometric, usually sine and tangent, common logarithm, natural logarithm and exponential scales. Some rules include a Pythagorean scale, to figure sides of triangles, and a scale to figure circles. Others feature scales for calculating hyperbolic functions. On linear rules, the scales and their labeling are highly standardized with variation usually occurring only in terms of which scales are included and in what order. The binary slide rule manufactured by Gilson in 1931 performed an addition and subtraction function limited to fractions. Roots and powers there are single decade, double decade, and triple decade scales. To compute, for example, locate x on the d scale and read its square on the a scale. Inverting this process allows square roots to be found, and similarly for the powers 3, 1 third, 2 thirds, and 3 halves. Care must be taken when the base, x, is found in more than one place on its scale. For instance, there are two nines on the a scale. To find the square root of 9, use the first one. The second one gives the square root of 90. For problems, use the L scales. When several L scales are present, use the one with x on it. First, align the leftmost one on the C scale with X on the L scale. Then, find Y on the C scale and go down to the L scale with X on it. That scale will indicate the answer. If Y is off the scale, locate and square it using the A and B scales as described above. Alternatively, use the rightmost one on the C scale and read the answer off the next higher L scale. For example, aligning the rightmost one on the C scale with 2 on the LL2 scale, 3 on the C scale lines up with 8 on the LL3 scale. Trigonometry The S, T, and Saint scales are used for trig functions and multiples of trig functions, for angles in degrees, for angles from around 5.7 up to 90 degrees. 
signs are found by comparing the S scale with C scale, though on many closed body rules the S scale relates to the A scale instead, and what follows must be adjusted appropriately. The S scale has a second set of angles, which run in the opposite direction, and are used for cosines. Tangents are found by comparing the T scale with the C scale for angles less than 45 degrees. For angles greater than 45 degrees the CI scale is used. Common forms such as can be read directly from X on the S scale to the result on the D scale, when the C scale index is set at K. For angles below 5.7 degrees, sines, tangents, and radians are approximately equal, and are found on the Saint or SRT scale, or simply divided by 57.3 degrees, radian. Inverse trigonometric functions are found by reversing the process. Many slide rules have S, T, and Saint scales marked with degrees and minutes. So-called D-Citric models use decimal fractions of degrees instead. Logarithms and exponentials based 10 logarithms and exponentials are found using the L scale, which is linear. Some slide rules have a lane scale, which is for base E. Logarithms to any other base can be calculated by reversing the procedure for calculating powers of a number. For example, log 2 values can be determined by lining up either leftmost or rightmost 1 on the C scale with 2 on the LL2 scale. Finding the number whose logarithm is to be calculated on the corresponding L scale and reading the log 2 value on the C scale. Addition and subtraction slide rules are not typically used used for addition and subtraction, but it is nevertheless possible to do so using two different techniques. The first method to perform addition and subtraction on the C and D requires converting the problem into one of division. For addition, the quotient of the two variables plus one times the divisor equals their sum. For subtraction, the quotient of the two variables minus one times the divisor equals their difference. This method is similar to the addition, subtraction technique used for high-speed electronic circuits with the logarithmic number system in specialized computer applications like the gravity pipe supercomputer and hidden Markov models. The second method utilizes a sliding linear L scale available on some models. Addition and subtraction are performed by sliding the cursor left or right then returning the slide to zero to read the result. Physical design. Standard linear rules the width of the slide rule is quoted in terms of the nominal width of the scales. Scales on the most common 10-inch models are actually 25 centimeters, as they were made to metric standards. Though some rules offer slightly extended scales to simplify manipulation when the result overflowed. Pocket rules are typically 5 inches. Models a couple of meters wide were sold to be hung in classrooms for teaching purposes. Typically, the divisions mark a scale to a precision of two significant figures, and the user estimates the third figure. Some high-end slide rules have magnifier curses that make the markings easier to see. Such curses can effectively double the accuracy of readings, permitting a 10-inch slide rule to serve as well as a 20-inch. Various other conveniences have been developed. Trigonometric scales are sometimes dual-labeled, in black and red, with complementary angles, the so-called Darmstadt style. Duplex slide rules often duplicate some of the scales on the back. Scales are often split to get higher accuracy. Circular slide rules Circular slide rules come in two basic types, one with two cursors, and another with a free dish and one cursor. The dual cursor versions perform multiplication and division by holding a fast angle between the cursors as they are rotated around the dial. The one-fold cursor version operates more like the standard slide rule through the appropriate alignment of the scales. The basic advantage of a circular slide rule is that the widest dimension of the tool was reduced by a factor of about 3. For example, a 10 cm circular would have a maximum precision approximately equal to a 31.4 cm ordinary slide rule. Circular slide rules also eliminate off-scale calculations. 
because the scales were designed to wrap around, they never have to be reoriented when results are near 1.0. The rule is always on scale. However, for non-cyclical non-spiral scales such as S, T, and LLs, the scale width is narrowed to make room for end margins. Circular slide rules are mechanically more rugged and smoother moving, but their scale alignment precision is sensitive to the centering of a central pivot. A minute 0.1 mm off center of the pivot can result in a 0.2 mm worst case alignment error. The pivot, however, does prevent scratching of the face and curses. The highest accuracy scales are placed on the outer rings. Rather than split scales, high-end circular rules use spiral scales for more complex operations like log of log scales. One 8-inch premium circular rule had a 50-inch spiral log log scale. The main disadvantages of circular slide rules are the difficulty in locating figures along a dish and limited number of scales. Another drawback of circular slide rules is that less important scales are closer to the center and have lower precisions. Most students learned slide rule use on the linear slide rules and did not find reason to switch. One slide rule remaining in daily use around the world is the E6B. This is a circular slide rule first created in the 1930s for aircraft pilots to help with dead reckoning. With the aid of scales printed on the frame it also helps with such miscellaneous tasks as converting time, distance, speed, and temperature values, compass errors, and calculating fuel use. The so-called prayer wheel is still available in flight shops and remains widely used. While GPS has reduced the use of dead reckoning for aerial navigation and handheld calculators have taken over many of its functions, the E6B remains widely used as a primary or backup device and the majority of flight schools demand that their students have some degree of proficiency in its use. Proportion wheels are simple circular slide rules used in graphic design to broaden or slim images and photographs. Lining up the desired values on the Emma and the inner wheels will display the proportion as a percentage in a small window. They are not as common since the advent of computerized layout, but are still made and used. In 1952, Swiss watch company Breitling introduced a pilot's wristwatch with an integrated circular slide rule specialized for flight calculations. The Breitling Navi Timer the Navi Timer Circular Rule, referred to by Breitling as a navigation computer, featured airspeed, rate, time of climb, descent, flight time, distance, and fuel consumption functions, as well as kilometer, nautical mile and gallon, liter fuel amount conversion functions. A simple circular slide rule made by Concise Co. Limited, Tokyo, Japan, with only inverse, square, and cubic scales. On the reverse is a handy list of 38 metric imperial conversion factors. A Russian circular slide rule built like a pocket watch that works as single cursor slide rule since the two needles are ganged together. A two-scale slide rule built into a ring. Picket circular slide rule with two curses. Reverse has additional scale in one cursor. Breitling Navi Timer wristwatch with circular slide rule. Cylindrical slide rules. There are two main types of cylindrical slide rules. Those with helical scales such as the Fuller, the Otis King and the Bygrave slide rule. And those with bars, such as the Thacker and some logger models. In either case, the advantage is a much longer scale, and hence potentially greater precision, than afforded by a straight or circular rule. Otis King Model K Thacker Slide Rule Circa 1890 Materials Traditionally slide rules were made out of hardwood such as mahogany or boxwood with curses of glass and metal. At least one high-precision instrument was made of steel. In 1895, a Japanese firm, Hema, started to make slide rules from bamboo, which had the advantages of being dimensionally stable, strong and naturally self-lubricating. These bamboo slide rules were introduced in Sweden in September, 1933, and probably only a little earlier in Germany. 
scales were made of celluloid, plastic, or painted aluminium. Later curses were acrylics or polycarbonates sliding on Teflon bearings. All premium slide rules had numbers and scales engraved, and then filled with paint or other resin. Painted or imprinted slide rules were viewed as inferior because the markings could wear off. Nevertheless, Pickett, probably America's most successful slide rule company, made all printed scales. Premium slide rules included clever catches so the rule would not fall apart by accident, and bumpers to protect the scales and cursor from rubbing on tabletops. The recommended cleaning method for engraved markings is to scrub lightly with steel wool. For painted slide rules use diluted commercial window cleaning fluid and a soft cloth.